Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. What if you are doing an examination, then suddenly a question like this pop up? A client got sick shortly after a snowstorm, knocked out electrical power to the house three days ago. The client has been weak and tired and unable to leave the house or go to work. The client reports a continual dull headache, nausea, dizziness, and shortness of breathing. Which question would be the most helpful for the nurse to ask while completing the history? Sounds tricky, right? You are seated there doing the examination. However, you don't have the idea what's really the topic in the question and you cannot even see a disease being said in the question. So what do you think the answer of this question? Don't worry, because at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what to do during your nursing examination if you guys don't know the topic of the question. But before we are going to proceed on that activity, let's discuss carbon monoxide poisoning. And before we're going to proceed, please don't forget to click like, comment, subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. Here in carbon monoxide poisoning, we need to discuss first what is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a gas product of incomplete hydrocarbon combustion. This carbon monoxide is actually tasteless, odorless, and colorless. Thereby, we are calling this as silent killer. This carbon monoxide has the capacity to bind with the circulating blood hemoglobin, producing therefore a carbohemoglobin. And its affinity to the hemoglobin is 200 to 300 times than that of the oxygen hemoglobin. Therefore, carbon monoxide has much stronger bond to hemoglobin than the oxygen does. In carbon monoxide poisoning, this is actually danger because it is a type of inhalation poisoning through overexposure to carbon monoxide. It may occur at home or in industrial places. Sometimes also, it is a form of accidental inhalation or intentionally inflicted to have suicide. For those patients who are victims of burn, they can suffer from monoxide poisoning. This time, let's discuss the pathophysiology of carbon monoxide into the patient's bloodstream. If the patient is exposed to burns or any carbon monoxide related matters, or if there is an increased exposure of carbon monoxide, that carbon monoxide will be inhaled by the patient. Once inhaled, the body replaces the oxygen, especially in the red blood cells, with carbon monoxide, so there is a binding involved. Once there is a binding involved already in your bloodstream with your red blood cells, the occurrence of carbon monoxide builds up in the bloodstream. Therefore, when this happens, when carbon monoxide binds with the red blood cells, this happened from red to black, okay? Because there is a decreased oxygen already and there is an increase in carbon monoxide, therefore the blood cells will turn into black, causing patients hypoxia because of the decrease in oxygen level. Therefore, when this happens, this can lead to serious tissue damage or even patient's death. So primarily, it causes tissue anoxia, which later on leads to more severe health problems and worse patient's death. Typically, we need to talk also about the blood level of carbon monoxide and we have actually normal, mild, moderate, severe, and fatal. In the right side of this table are the manifestations that the patient can suffer. So the blood level of normal is 1 to 10. So let's not expect any manifestations or, or any signs and symptoms for this patient yet. However, if the patient's blood level of carbon monoxide reaches from 11 to 20, that means that the patient is already in mild carbon monoxide poisoning. And here are the manifestations. Headache, flushing, decreased visual acuity, decreased cerebral functioning, slight breathlessness. If you can observe, it attacks directly the patient's head. And you can see all these things in the patient's sensory organs, okay? The next one is moderate, wherein the blood level is 21 to 40. From the manifestations of mild, let's add also nausea and vomiting, tinnitus and vertigo, confusion and stupor, pale to reddish purple, and increased heart rate. If you can see here, pale to reddish purple. Why? Because we've mentioned earlier that there is already an increased carbon monoxide builds up in the bloodstream. Therefore, there is hypoxia happening. The next one is severe, which has a blood level of 41 to 60. Unfortunately, this time, the patient may suffer from coma and seizures. And the last blood level is 61 to 80. This is already fatal to the patient's side. Therefore, this may cause patient's death. 
So to briefly summarize the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning, let's have this. First, the patient will suffer from dull headache, which is found in the mild symptoms. Then the next one will suffer from weakness, then dizziness, then confusion to loss of consciousness, from mild to severe. And carbon monoxide attacks the patient's neurological and respiratory conditions. Other signs and symptoms that the patient may suffer are blurred vision, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breathing, and palpitations. So these are the signs and symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. While the patient is standing, this is still mild. However, if the patient is already lying down on the floor, patient may suffer from loss of consciousness to coma. And worse, the patient may die. Therefore, carbon monoxide poisoning can be particularly dangerous for people who are sleeping or intoxicated. Why? Because as we mentioned earlier, carbon monoxide is a tasteless, odorless, and colorless. So it is a silent killer. Now let's proceed on how are we going to assess our patient. First is we need to know the signs and symptoms. And the signs and symptoms are manifestations depending on the level of carbon monoxide in the blood. So this time, let's use the ABC as our primary survey. So what do we always say here in the primary survey? That is the assessment of your airway, your breathing, and your circulation. Once you are done with your primary survey, you can use the sample method technique in the assessment wherein you are going to, to identify or recheck the patient's manifestations with regard to carbon monoxide poisoning. And always note that the system that is being affected here mostly is the respiratory system or the oxygenation of the patient. Now, here in the primary survey, do ABC, so assess immediately for the airway. If it is due to carbon monoxide smoke inhalation, stridor may be present. This is due to the formation of the laryngeal edema from thermal injury. So it is vital for you to check for airway obstruction if the client is unconscious. Muscles around air passages may relax if the client turned unconscious due to prolonged exposure or massive poisoning. So there will be an obstruction since the muscles are relaxed okay the tongue may relax causing an obstruction to the patient's airway next is assess for the patient breathing the client may actually manifest respiratory depression always remember that so assess for patients breathing their respiratory rate next is assess for their circulation why do we need to check for their circulation since we are talking about blood here pulses may receive the bad impact wherein there will be a cessation of pulse rate therefore if you assess already that there is no pulse and no breathing initiate immediately for CPR once you're done quickly assessing the patient using the primary assessment, you can now do your initial interventions. Position the patient to semifowlers if it's not contraindicated. Because in semifowlers position, there is lung expansion, allowing more oxygen to enter the lungs. Next is secure safety through side rails. Remember that your patient is already decreasing the level of consciousness. Therefore, you need to anticipate for any fall so do fall precaution to your patient next is oxygenation administer 100 percent of oxygen via face mask or you can use non-rebreather mask depending on the doctor's order but it should be 100 percent why because we need to increase the level of oxygen in the body in order to replace the carbon monoxide especially in the red blood cells okay as mentioned earlier here in the pathophysiology of this carbon monoxide there is a binding of carbon monoxide in the red blood cells replacing the oxygen into it therefore if the carbon monoxide enters already your bloodstream and there is an increase in the number of carbon monoxide in your blood there will be a presence of hypoxia therefore patient may be presented to be pale like that of course, you need to monitor for any signs on the necessity of intubation. The next assessment that we can use is the sample technique, wherein S stands for beware of the patient's symptom. Though you're done already with your primary assessment, recheck every now and then the level of consciousness of your patient. You should monitor it at least every 15 minutes 
depending on the doctor's order. But as a nurse, you need to have an eye, closed eye with your patient. Because here in carbon monoxide poisoning, there is a possibility of rapid progression into coma. So, check your patient's GCS or use AVPU. A-V-P-U, okay? If you don't know what AVPU is, it is actually discussed on this video. You can check this video, okay? A stands for note for patient's allergy. We need to take note or we need to have an assessment if the one attacking the patient or the cause of the symptom is because of the allergy or carbon monoxide. Always note for your patient's allergy, no matter what condition that patient is having. M stands for assess any presence of medication involvement or intoxication. Maybe the patient is receiving some medications that will decrease the consciousness level which letting the patient to be at risk for carbon monoxide poisoning, okay? Because they might drive like that and then suddenly they lost their consciousness while driving. So you need to know those medications. And also, if the patient is intoxicated, if the patient is intoxicated, there is a greater risk that they will be a victim of carbon monoxide poisoning, especially if they're driving car. Next is determine patient's underlying health status or history. In here, you need to take note all those patients' past medical history because the presence of anemia, pulmonary disease, or cardiac disease would put the patient into a greater risk. The next is note for patient's last meal or drink. Same with the one that I've mentioned earlier in the medication. You need to take note on this one because we are not only talking about medications here but all the, those things that the patient intake like alcohol or any kind of foods. Next is assess for patient's exposure in the event. This is so vital in your gathering of information because gathering this information or history from the patient or any person with the patient in relation to carbon monoxide poisoning, particularly the type and length of exposure will help you more in the process of treatment. Now we're done with the assessment and now let's discuss nursing interventions. Here, we need to assess or monitor for vital signs. We need to prioritize this. Why? Because let's expect that there is an elevated respiratory and pulse rate and also be alert in any altered breathing patterns and episodes of apnea. If there is already an episodes of apnea, this is already on the latter stage of this carbon monoxide poisoning. The patient may develop coma and worse respiratory depression, okay? Next is recheck for the level of consciousness. Monitor for any signs of cerebral hypoxia because if there is already a cerebral hypoxia, the cells are not actually getting enough oxygen. Therefore, confusion may happen. And this may lead again to coma. Next is assess for other neurologic and other systemic condition or signs and symptoms. That could be dizziness, headache, muscular weakness, and palpitation. And also, assess for the signs of acute respiratory distress syndrome because RALS may happen and also wheezes because of the problem already in the airway. And lastly, monitor for your patient's ABG. Another nursing intervention also is to monitor your patient's symptom. Now, our general intervention while we are caring for patients with carbon monoxide poisoning, number one is always assess for your patient. Assess their condition, especially in their level of consciousness. And once you already see something in your patient, do your independent nursing intervention and inform your physician. Next is oxygenation. Do not forget this. Always maintain 100% oxygenation. Also, focus on the electrolyte imbalance. That's why there is always ABG. And lastly, watch out for the signs of progressing neurological problems like psychosis, visual disturbances, and personality deterioration. There are a lot of complications of this carbon monoxide poisoning, but here are the top. First is there is a permanent brain damage. Once there's already a decreased level of oxygenation in the red blood cells, all cells will be having a difficulty also. So once that carbon monoxide reaches your brain, there will be a problem with your brain cells because there's already decrease in oxygenation causing a damage. Next is damage to your heart, possibly leading to life-threatening cardiac complications because your blood is circulating, therefore it will also reach the heart. Next, there will be a fetal death or miscarriage. And lastly, death. This is the worst thing that could ever happen. <laughs> 
So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.